Hey gang, hi, 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 yep, the Super Tech here with some Super D-Lab technology. Today, the prototype, standalone, Ranger BFO. Here we go. Hey, welcome everybody to a special D-Lab presentation. A prototype project that I've been working on over the last few years is finally ready. I'm going to demonstrate this little gadget to you in just a second. But first, I'd like to express my thanks and gratitude to a fellow ham operator that sent me a donation and sent my wife a card in the mail about her mom. It's WD9ABG. His name is Martin Link. He donated to D-Lab. He also sent my wife a nice card that really made her day. Appreciate it, man. All right, so what's D-Lab's top secret project a standalone VFO housed in a Collins cabinet do you recognize that VFO does it look like what you'd see on your Ranger or your Valiant exactly but now instead of relying on a transmitter it's a standalone unit with a built-in power supply and it can be run on any transmitter let me pull it out of the cabinet and I'll go through it and show you what I did Okay, before I pull the VFO out of the cabinet and show you guys the construction, let's just go over these controls really quick because they are not as they appear. This is not the exciter and this is not the final tune anymore. These are selector switches. This is my band select and this is my power. So the power is off, on, and spot. We're in spot function right now. And you can see the 1.8 megahertz. That is because... I'm in the first band selection position, which is 11680. So as I tune, you'll see that frequency adjust, right? Now if I go up here, we're on the 40 meter band. Same deal. You can adjust to 7 megahertz. If I go to the next position, that would be for 11 meters. So what you're seeing there would be the 6 point whatever megahertz times 4 to give you 27 megahertz. For that selection on the dial. You can see my spot. Okay, I can kill it and I can turn on the VFO. Alright, so now you guys understand the basic functions of the VFO. Let's pull it out of the cabinet and I'll explain to you guys why I did this. Okay, before I go into the details of this little prototype project, Let's kind of break this down a little bit to the basics. So some of you out there may be saying, what the heck is a VFO? That is a abbreviation for variable frequency oscillator. Okay, So that's what this thing allows you to do. It is actually a frequency generator and it takes place of multiple crystals. So this is a crystal that they would use back in the day. They plug it into the transmitter so they can talk to guys on a certain frequency. And that was great, except let's say that you want to talk to guys on 3.885, but your crystal is a little bit off frequency. You can't adjust it. You're stuck. So everybody else is going to have to tune their receiver to hear your transmitter because your crystal is not where you thought it was. That's why they came up with the VFO. So this replaces multiple crystals. It allows you to dial in somebody that you want to talk to. So if you hear somebody, let's say, on 7.2 megahertz, you would spot, you'd adjust your VFO, and you would hear this device on the same frequency as what you want to talk on. Okay, and That means your transmitter and their receiver are on the same frequency. So this is a very desirable device. And as a matter of fact, they didn't sell as many VFOs as they did transmitters. So hams are always searching these things out. So Johnson made an external VFO for their transmitters. It's called the VF122. But it's very hard to come by and the price is going through the roof. 
The thing that I didn't like about the VF122s is they actually pulled the power from the transmitter so they had a tendency to drift around a little bit. It was a great VFO. It's still one of my favorites, but I thought, you know what? I prefer the VFO that was built into the Rangers and the Valiants because they were refined and they were much more stable. And I thought, how can I have that stability in a standalone VFO? Well, here it is, the VFO 123. So first, let's just break this down to the major sections. We have our control panel. This front bezel and knobs were taken from a Valiant. All right. Then we have the actual VFO assembly. This came from a navigator that was donated to D-Lab. I upgraded this to be the same as what you would see in a Ranger. So I added the OA2 and also made some circuitry changes. Back here is the power supply. So we have our power transformer, a choke, there's some caps underneath. This is my RF output coming out of the VFO. And this RCA jack is the keying input which would come from an external transmitter. All right, let's take a look underneath. Currently I have my access panel removed so you can see the internals of the VFO. This switch is actually the switch that was on the stock VFO. This cage used to sit vertically when it was in the transmitter. I had to lay it on its side so that it would fit in the cabinet. Plus it gave me access to be able to install some terminal boards and swing this switch up to the front panel. Okay, If you look here, this is a stock vernier drive that came out of that Valiant. So I had to ensure that the spacing between the VFO and the front panel was the same as it was on the Valiant because you have a coupler sitting right in there. It's pretty difficult to see. But that coupler has to take the quarter inch shaft off of the VFO drive and it reduces it down to 3 16 to turn the internal variable capacitor. Okay. Then over here we have another switch. And he's also very close to the VFO cage. This guy turns on the 120 volts AC and provides the spot function. So the distance between the VFO and this front panel is approximately 7 eighths of an inch. And believe me, it was difficult for me to get everything to fit in there without those switches shorting out. But there's plenty of distance, so I have no worries about any shorting between the chassis and those terminals. So let's go over the power supply section. This is my main power transformer, a little choke. Go to the bottom side here, you'll see there's not much going on. Get our AC input, goes through fuse, it's rectified, a couple filter caps. We got our high voltage here, six volt filaments that feeds the VFO cage. Well, here's a back view of the VFO. We've got our little clip-in GE47 dial lamps, VFO cage, and the power supply with the AC input, RF output, and here is a little RCA jack. That's your key line that comes from your transmitter to turn on the VFO when you need it to operate. The chassis measures approximately 9.5 by 5 inches. I only selected this chassis because it fit in the cabinet that I selected. You can see that you could obviously go with a smaller chassis or you could actually go with a larger one depending on the cabinet that you choose. The other thing that I wanted to point out, if you look at this at the back view, you'll see that this cage is shifted. Okay, That's because I had to turn it on its side. If this guy was standing vertically like it was in the Ranger, 
then there wouldn't be this strange alignment issue. I had to do this because of where the tuning shaft exited the front panel. I needed to make sure I had perfect alignment so things would slide into the cabinet. If you have a taller cabinet and you can stand your VFO up, then everything can be on a center line. So here's my bottom cover installed. Actually now it's a side cover since the VFO lays on its side in this installation. Got a little rubber grommet here to protect the wires I have to go into the terminal board. This green wire here is just the 6 volt AC feed for the two dial lamps. A modular design, something that you could build and incorporate into your station to have the most stable VFO that Johnson ever made. So how cool is that guys? The most stable VFO design that Johnson had that was normally only offered integrated into the transmitters now can be a standalone unit that you could operate on your Heathkit, Ico, Globe, or your Johnson transmitter, okay? And you can build it yourself. So disclaimer time, D-Lab is not going to offer this as a kit or sell them. I'm just putting this information out here in case you want to do it yourself. If so, drop me a line. I can shoot you some pictures, schematics, and give you some advice but that's all I can do. This is a project that I've wanted to do for years and here it is. It's going to work great. I'll have future videos showing it in operation with a Viking 2 and anything else I can hook it up to. Until then, have fun with the hobby guys. Contact me if you need my help. 73's from N6TLU.